Now, the question is, what was the basis? What are the, the, the structure, the, the economic structures that were allowing all this trade to go back and forth? Now, you may get the impression that it was all heroic traders uh, and merchants um, who were putting their money on life on, 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 uh, on, on line and were trading with making these great voyages. But in fact, it was a lot more sophisticated than that. Um, many of these voyages actually happened <coughs> not by individuals going back and forth, but through corporatized guilds. They're almost like companies. And many of them were caste-based companies. Many of, most of them were, in fact, not caste-based companies. Uh, some of them had names like the 500 and so on. And so they were almost like um, corporates and the multinational corporates. And many of them lasted hundreds of years who were doing this trade going back and forth. Some of them hired uh, mercenaries to, um, to back up their uh, and protect their trade routes. And they were very, very powerful. And uh, there were several of them in South East, uh, southern India. Um, and what is even more fascinating is that much of the financing of this was done by the temples. Now, the general impression is that the temples were rich because the rajas were all handing over large amounts of money to the, uh, the, the, to the these temples, but that may have been the seed money. But one of the reasons many of these temples had such a lot of gold was that, in fact, they functioned as banks. And we have copper plate... Um, Lots of copper plate um, uh, remains of uh, contracts between the guilds. So there were merchant guilds, there were artisan guilds, and they had contracts. Then there were contracts between the merchant guilds and the financiers, which were the temples. Uh, and that was kind of the structure on which much of this was going on.